everyone. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for the Hasura team for accepting my talk and inviting me to this user conference. And my talk is about a little tool that we created to help the life of Java dev developers just like me who work with Java and Hibernate and also want to use Hasura in their project. So some words about me. I work for Saki, which is the Institute for Computer Science and Control in Hungary. This is a research institute and I work for the Department of Distributed Systems. We are involved in projects with digital libraries, linked data, and sometimes delayed learning networking. And uh, I work there as a research associate and software engineer. So how I met Hasura. Our stack is on the back end, we use Java with the Spring Framework and Hibernate as our uh, object relational mapper. And we have PostgreSQL as the database backend and on the front end, JavaScript, uh, single page applications. So in my pre previous project, we just had a usual Spring Data application with a REST API, but soon we figured out that it was not really efficient in our case, because in case of REST, you first uh, load one resource, and then you need another request to, to get the related object and the related object of those resources. And so we really ended up with a REST-ish API, where we implemented pretty much a lot of functionality that we, as later learned, GraphQL offers to us. So I said to myself that in my next project, I will try to use GraphQL instead of uh, our solution to see how it works. So I Googled Postgres GraphQL and I found uh, some pretty nice projects. First was GraphQL JPI query, which works uh, in my Java world with Java persistence API, but it just didn't provide uh, the query expressiveness that uh, I really needed. Then I found GraphFile, which is really nice, but for this to effectively use, you need to uh, know a lot about the internals of PostgreSQL. You need to write PostgreSQL functions. You need to work with the role level security of PostgreSQL. And then I met, uh, found Hasura, and it just seemed the perfect match. But I wanted to use our usual uh, Java workflow and use it together with Hasura. So my usual workflow, uh, is like this. Uh, we started off modeling our application from the Java side, so we do not uh, build a, a database first, but we model our things in Java. And uh, how it works is that um, sorry, my son just came in. Yeah, yeah I, I, I was just Continue from. So our usual uh, workflow with, with with Java is like this: we start off with modeling um, in, in in Java, and this project I uh, had the task to build a system which provides information, work instructions for workers uh, in a factory uh, on the assembly line. So it instructs workers how to assemble a certain part uh, of a product. It is. Uh, the work instruction has some operations that need to be carried out. It has some textual information which describes what you need to do. And there is a skill level which defines uh, whether this instruction is for an expert worker or a beginner who needs detailed information. So once I have the J Java model, I add the Java persistence annotations with which I can define that the operations, how, they oper how, how this object is, should be mapped to the database. And I here said that the operations is a many-to-many -many association, the skill level is many-to-one, and the work instruction has a text object that is owned by the work instruction itself. So once I have all this set up, I run my application, and Hibernate would generate the database schema for us for my work instruction object or class I have this uh, table defined. So now I have my, my database ready. I can do the Hasura configuration, which works as we all know. We go to the Hasura console. And first of all, we have to make our tables known to Hasura. So we have to track some or all of them. So in this case, I press track all. And now I will have all my tables available to Hasura. Now comes the next step. I'm offered with uh, a very huge list of foreign key relations, sometimes several, hundreds of these. And here comes the problem, which one should I track for my application? Should I track them all or should I select uh, some of it? So here's my, my problem. This is my mental model. This is how I see my work. This is the object I, I work with. And now this is what I have to deal with in Hasura. So which uh, relationship maps to which of my, my members? I can figure out that text and work instruction text is that and skill level is this. 
But then uh, for many to many associations, Hibernate generates a join table. First, I have to figure out which one is this, which turns out that be this one. And the other problem is because the, the join table uh, is can be accessed from all sides. I can accept, access from the work instruction, the operation, but also from the operation, the work instruction, which I don't want because this is how I define my model. I only want to access operations from the work instructions. So if I just play, uh, click track all, then also this instruction or this relationship would be tracked by Hasura. So here's what my problem, first problem that my mental model and how I have to deal with the model in Hasura console deviates. Then I, as I progress developing my applications, I often want to add new fields to my model. In this case, besides the textual information, I plan to add some multimedia. This is simple. In Java, I just add one line of code. I want a list of multimedia to have here and map as a many-to-many -many association. So once I do this, I run again my applications. A Hibernate will take care of adding the new fields and the new relationships. Now I go back to my Hasura console. And here's, again, my problem, which is the new relationship or the new things that I just added to my application. After a lot of eyeball search, I can figure out that, OK, this is the one line I want to uh, click track here. So this is my second problem with this workflow, is that whenever I change my model in Java, I also have to go back to Hasura console and update the configurations. OK, but so far, so good. Now I defined my model in Java, generated the database, and made it available. Uh, as a, a GraphQL schema, now I can do some querying. And these are the, the symbols that I'm now provided by Hasura. And the problem here again is that my, my model, as I think about it, my objects look like this with camel case and Pascal case things. And in Hasura, I have all these uh, snake case underscored uh, symbols. So my number three problem was that names in Hasura are derived from the PostgreSQL table and column names. And so they don't match the camel case names I would like to see. So that was the point when I thought that, OK, I need a tool to handle all this. And this is Hasura configurator. And how it works is that it uses the Hasura schema metadata API, which is a, a provides a declarative configuration with which you can do pretty much all the same things that you can do visually on the Hasura console, but you can do it uh, programmatically by sending a specific JSON to an endpoint provided by the Hasura server. And this is the actual endpoint and uh, a very simple uh, JSON format that uh, you have to follow. Hasura configurator itself is a little library written in Kotlin. And how it works is it collects model information from Hibernate at runtime, specifically what tables are created for my Java classes, how Java class members are mapped to column names, and how the related Java classes are represented in the database. With all this information, Hasura Configurator knows how my things look in Java and how they are uh, mapped to PostgreSQL. And using all this information, I can generate this uh, Hasura metadata API JSON file that can be loaded into Hasura to automatically track all my tables created for my Java entity. So I don't have to press track all for my tables. The second thing is all my uh, generated, the roof operations are now alias and, and use camel case names that I like much more than the, the underscored names. Also, I changed that instead of insert, I like to see create uh, for this operation. This is done automatically by the tool. Also, it automatically camel cases uh, alias is uh, the, the underscore name. So it, the database, it was created underscore at. Now it becomes created at with camel case, just like as it was in my Java object. And uh, also it only takes care that it only tracks those relationships that have been declared um, in my Java classes and not anything else. And also these relationships names are now uh, camel case. So before, uh, applying my Hasura configurator JSON to the metadata API, I had to deal with uh, symbols like this. But after that, this is what I'm uh, having now. I have work instructions here, a nice looking work instructions uh, operation here, created that here, created that here, skill level here, skill level here, just a much better uh, developer experience. But there are some more things that are provided by Hasura configurator. If you don't like the names, it generates automatically. You can override it. Uh, using annotations. So this is the annotation to override the root fields. If you don't, don't like the default, 
you can also override the um, field names. Although in this case, you could also just uh, write in Java te instruction text, and then it will be exposed like this. But if you don't want this, you can have a different name in GraphQL than you have in Java. Also, uh, Hasura provides uh, a feature that if you have a specifically uh, created database table, you can expose it as a GraphQL uh, enumeration in the Hasura console. This is a tick. Here, here you have to annotate it, but with Hasura enum to expose it as an enumeration. And last but not least, you can also defy all your permission needs for, for each of your entities. Uh, the structure of this annotation uh, maps pretty much to what you expect and what you see uh, on the console. You define a role and an operation you want to apply the permission to. You can define what fields to include or exclude. And you can define the JSON that is applied um, as a permission rule uh, to this operation. And I figured out that I have to reuse this JSON a lot. So you can also specify it uh, in a file in your uh, Java class pass and then load it from there. So after all this, how my workflow changed with Hasura Configurator. I still do data modeling in Java using Java persistent annotations. Uh, then I run my project with Hasura Configurator to generate the uh, Hasura metadata. And I can freely update my project, uh, do the editations, extend it, and I can be sure that the Hasura Configuration will uh, take care of this. And my model in Java and uh, in the Hasura world will be in sync. And also, I will uh, end up with, with nicely looking camel case symbols on the JavaScript side uh, derived from the uh, GraphQL schema. Especially, we use um, Mobex State 3 GraphQL, which generates a lot of model files. And there, I now have nice look looking camel case names instead of uh, underscored uh, snake case names. So if you are working with Java, Spring, and uh, specifically Hibernate as your uh, persistence layer in Java, uh, check out this tool available on, on GitHub and tell me what you think about this. Thank you very much.